We're back at the Fix It Show working on the 73 Suzuki. And if you remember, the gas tank was used, got it off eBay, and it had a big, huge dent in the left-hand side of it. So the first few steps in body work we're going to show you, you got to get the dent out. So we drilled some holes and used a slide hammer here to pop the dents out. Once you get it real close, you uh, weld up the holes. Obviously, you don't want gas leaking through there. And then you grind it. You don't want to ever put Bondo on paint because it won't stick real well. You grind it real good with a disc and then you can spread your Bondo. You don't want to ever have Bondo more than a quarter inch thick. You start shaping the tank with that Bondo and then you can use a cheese grater, grind your high spots off and then reduce it to 80 grit and then 120, 220 and so on. And uh, after you get all your body work done and shaped, then you can put some primer on it. Okay, you take a maybe a half a golf ball, depending on how much you need of this Bondo. And get it off your stick. Get it out there on your mixing board. Add a little shot of the old hardener. Not too much, but it is a cold day, so we need to add a little. Oh, okay, well, we'll add a little more. We'll listen to the cameraman this time. <laughs> That might bite me in the rear too. Might kick off too fast for me. But that's how you blend it. You mix it. Make sure it's mixed real good. Look at that wrist action. Hmm. A little bit of lacquer thinner to uh, thin it out of here. Make it flow real nice. That's an old secret. So now that you know where your low spots are, then you take the old spreader. Hold that camera steady. Ooh, nice coat. This is going to be one good looking TM125 when Cowboy Dave gets done with it. You saw that Elsinore he restored and painted. That's the quality. Well, the Elsinore was a metallic color. The silver, this will be a solid base color. Just like Roger DeCostra would have wanted it. So Cowboy Dave did a really nice job of getting all the dents out of the Suzuki TM125. So he handed it over to me to clean up the inside. Because that's more of a rookie move. He's the, he's the paint and body guy. And I'm going to do what he said. There's so, got some weird little nipples on here I'm going to try and sand off. Stuff like overspray from somebody. And rusty top layer. This one, the black speckles are a guide coat with a black spray paint. You just speckle it on and then that all gets sanded off so there's no black and then if there's any black left that'll show little chips, scratches, nicks that you forgot to do in your body work. But that's a real heavy sanding primer. You don't want to go through that. You just want to sand the black off. The black speckle that we painted is called a guide coat. And by sanding that off lets you know all your imperfections, as in chips, scratches, runs, low spots, high spots. Once you know that all the black is gone, you know your surface is perfectly smooth. And then you are ready for base coat. The Suzuki tank is turning yellow. Looking good. Looking real good. Woo straight. 
Wait till we get our graphics on there and some clear coat and that is nice. Welcome back. We're in the shop with the TM125, the trash dumpster bike. And it's coming together real well. We got the bottom end put together with uh, new seals. Got the carb on. We're starting to put the plastic on. Mock it all up with some tech screws, as you can see. Make sure it's straight. And now, nobody sells this uh, lower mud flap for the bottom of the front of the back fender. So, we made a template out of an old beer box, which bends real nice. Oh, there you go. And uh, we're going to make sure that fits real well. Then we're going to take that template and scribe it onto a piece of 16th inch, looks like ABS, that we can heat up and uh, bend. Okay, we're going to take our template that we made to fit the front of the fender as a mud flap and we got some 16th inch Delrin that we're going to heat up. We're going to, we cut it to shape of the, the right size. We're going to heat it up to the corner edges and bend them around a little bit so they fit the fender real nice. And uh, then we're going to uh, tech screw it and then we're going to take tech screws out once we remove the fender and put pop rivets in. Can't believe how good this old dumpster Suzuki is looking. Thank you, Jimmy. Time and effort. Looking really good, Bob. It's getting there. Can't Hope. wait to ride this one. You betcha. All right. Let's go bend that thing up. And here's Paul with the heat gun, heating up the new mud flap for the Suzuki that we got going here. Making our own. That's what we do here. We fabricate. We try. And here's our Oscar winning Suzuki. Came out awesome. Okay, we're almost ready to pop rivet this puppy on. It's uh, looking pretty good, looking pretty stock. And it should keep a lot of the mud out of the back of the engine and air box. Okay, so we use the tech screws to hold this to get the right shape in the fender and our new mud flap that we made. Obviously, you don't want to keep tech screws in there because you can see them hanging out the inside. So we're going to try some pop rivets. We, you can always use screws and nuts that we're going to try pop rivets and we're going to just do one at a time because we don't want this to lose shape so you take the one out then your assistant hands you the proper 316 drill. drill let's get this hooked up okay so you want to make sure your rivet's seated all the way put your gun on give it a hit and yeehaw now Number two. Now let's go to this side. And the drill. Get it to the three sixteenths. And a pop rivet to go. Then we're going to, uh, these are our little marks for uh, getting the fender straight. We'll take those off with some acetone. Get your pop rivet sunk. Get your gun on it all the way. And okay, we got the barrel off the motor of the TM125 trash dumpster bike. There's the chassis, and uh, we're gonna do. We noticed that it was never ported or modified in any way. So the bore size is real good. The piston's real good. So what we're gonna do is we're not going to run the stock 26 millimeter carburetor because it was completely shot and I had a 28 laying around, 28 Makuni. So this is a 28 Makuni manifold. If you measure across here, it's 28 inches on the, 28 millimeters on the intake. 
So this is 26. So we're going to take some dicum. We're going to mark this up. This is going to be end up being a blue color. We're going to put the manifold on. Then we're going to scribe the new size all the way around here. Then we're going to take a grinder, die grinder, and we're going to open up that port so it'll breathe a little better. We're also going to work on the transfer ports. Okay, so this is how much material we're going to cut off from there to there. From there to there. This is a 26 millimeter hole. We're opening it up to 28, just to there. All the way around, and we're going to smooth it out so nice flow. Now, this is the kind of bit you use for aluminum. It's the open fluted. And the cross hatches are for the steel that don't clog up. So this, the steel on the sleeve, we use the cross hatches. And when we get into the aluminum, we use the fluted bits. And we have tighter, smaller ones than these that get down into the corners. We also want to open up some of this transfer port out here. You can see the gasket materials way out here. And we compare that to the uh, to the bottom end of the motor with a gasket, and that's you know gasket match and kind of like blueprinting a motor. Okay, so this is the stock transfer port. You can see it can be opened up a little bit to the gasket there. You see this first big step in it? That's the aluminum. And then the the fin, the barrel. And then the inside is the cast iron. So you want a nice smooth transition all through here. And when you start working on it and porting it, now we've got a nice, we're almost there on this side. We have a nice, nice flow of the gases. We need to take a little more off of the steel here. That's a different bit. This is the aluminum bit with the wide fluting. So we're going to keep cleaning this side up a little bit more, a little more on the steel, a nice transition. We're not taking anything off the total height. And then we're going to start whittling away on this side so it looks the same. So your gas flows real nice. And you also on these, uh, in the intake port, we got that about done. We're going to, down inside, we're going to make this bridge a sharp bridge so the gas passes it real easy. So there's a few little things you can just do. That's called cleaning and matching your ports. And it makes the bike run a lot more efficient and better power. Just those little things. All right, so we cleaned up the transfer ports real nice and evenly. You can see how the fuel air mixture will flow real nice. And this is a nice flow from the 28 millimeter into the 26. We Sharpened up the bridge on the port. There's the air compressor going off. That's always helpful. And we sharpened up the bridge on the exhaust port too. So this puppy will uh, run really good. We just need a good rider for it. So once we get this barrel cleaned up, we'll paint it and make it look like the head. And it should pick up a few little, few horsepower. What? Paul! What, cat daddy? Is that, all the, is that all you've gotten done so far? No, look at this thing. We got the frame painted. Uh huh. Frame painted. New forks, uh -huh. new fork seals, cleaned up the wheels, new tires. Um, well, I'll tell you what, buddy. <clears throat> this 125's been sold. It's got to be ready by Friday. Sold? Yeah, sold. Yeah, sold. we have. We have a customer. You sold my old They're bike old. already? It's not done yet. Your old bike? Oh, no, no, no. This was mine from the dumpster. What are you talking about? Uh, you gave up on that a long time ago. Just kind of do your thing. Because this bike's been sold. We have a customer that wants to race Saturday at Glen Helen. Wait, this Saturday? Yeah, this Saturday. Yeah, a leaving. week away. Yeah, a week away. We don't have fenders. Not, we don't not have even a week seat. away. Listen, listen. Not even a week away. Because he's leaving for the race on Friday. Friday 8 a.m. this needs to be done. So you can pick up the bike and race it at the Rain VMX Masters of Momentum Vintage 125cc Challenge. You guys need to put a little light on this subject because it doesn't look like it's going to be ready by Thursday. Oh, well, it's going to be ready or we haven't sold it. And if we don't sell it, we Good don't have the that. money to pay for a great operation like this. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Nah, it's easy. Look, you fix the dents. 
You put a motor in. You put a chain on it. <laughs> Here's the motor. Yeah, well, whose fault is that? That's half of it. That's not my job. I'm not the motor guy. Okay. I'm the sales guy who takes care of the business part of it. So right. get happy, Pappy. It's got to go. You're delusional. <sighs> yeah, well, I took a lot of drugs when I was younger. <laughs> All right, we'll do our best. How's yeah, that? Well, as long as the best is Friday morning, it's perfect and ready to go. And running? Is that the run? Well, yeah, he's going to race the bike. This is not a Greaves. Oh. <laughs> this is a Suzuki. Yeah. That was a little shot. So you want, you want the parts to stay on it? Yeah, yeah, we'd like the parts to continue to stay on the bike. Yeah. So that's it. Can you do it? Sure, you can do it. All right, great, Paul. You have, uh, I'm going to go have a beer. And uh, you take care of this, and I'll come in uh, on that game. I guess I got it 24 7, this baby. By Thursday, huh? I'd love to see this. Okay, so you got the rings compressed in the right position, barrels going down, everything looks good. Now, we're gonna put the head on. And here's Paul putting the head on. So what I'm going to do now is snug the head bolts up to 10 foot pounds. We want it topped out at 14, or 14 and a half. 15. Well, the book says 14 and a half. Jimmy says 15. But what? Okay, now you do it in a crisscross pattern. Snug them all up evenly first. You can snug up that barrel bolt, Jimmy, at the bottom. Okay, I got it. TM's a little bit of a pain because you got a smaller socket we need for this stud over the exhaust port. So you got to change back and forth from 12 to 14. And uh, busy talk, <laughs> busy work. Let's knock that guy up. Okay, so that's at 10. Switch out your socket cross pattern, diagonal pattern, that one's a 10, then I go to the front, and I go to the rear, it's 10, okay, okay, we got them all torqued to 10, now we're going to button it up to 15 in a cross pattern, so that the head, the gasket, and the barrel get pulled down nice and evenly. You got a spark plug for this thing? Yes. You want to find it? I'll go look for it. Please do. Okay, we're putting the 30 millimeter, I'm sorry, 28 millimeter Makuni on a TM125, which is normally a 26. So it's a little funky of a fit. And since we bought a bike that was incomplete, I've never done this before. So we got a little, little adjusting and stuff to get it to work but it looks like it's going to be okay the 73 tm 125 trash can bike dumpster bike we've been waiting and waiting we've been dialing this thing and getting it jetted ready for the uh, old school scrambles masters of momentum class in a week we've been waiting and waiting for these decals for the tank finishing touches these things they went from nevada to arkansas i tracked it all and then over to Oxnard, then down to LA, and then finally back to Camarillo where they should have been. And they finally made it. The stickers for the tank. The box was beat up, looked like it got ran over. But we're finally going to be able to make this bike look like a real Suzuki TM. I'm going to get these on later today and put some clear coat over it. This baby will be ready for the races. Okay, we're back at the Fix-It Show. We got a big announcement. We finally got the dumpster bike done. Took us uh, about two months finding all the parts and restoration and rebuilding everything. 
And uh, Cowboy Dave did a great job on paint and the decals on the tank. And we got aftermarket parts for the plastics. Um, we fixed up the pipe. We cleaned up the rims. We got new fork liners for it, fork tubes. Uh, new seat cover, seat foam, seat pan. We didn't have anything. You saw this junk when it came in. And we've been riding it around in the fields out here, and we've got uh, the jetting real close. It's going to go to the first race of the Masters of Momentum at Glen Helen on Saturday. And uh, we'll show it out there. We'll put some numbers on it. Cowboy's going to be aboard this puppy, showing them how the 70 plus does it. And uh, hope you all can try and do a project like this. It's real rewarding. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know. We, did, we had fun building it. We're going to add, look for another dumpster. Make sure you subscribe and uh, check us out. Thanks.